Uh, says psychological researchers plan to study the relationship between sleep and clinical depression, specifically wondering if less sleep could be associated with higher levels of depression. Okay. Uh, usually when I'm tired, I'm just tired. But I get irritable, I guess. All right, so state the null and the alternative. So number one, the oops, come on. Number one, the null, less sleep. Oops. Not associated with more depression. Okay. And then the alternative, less sleep associated with more depression. Pretty simple. So again, on the null, you're looking to make sure you have the, the no in there. Okay. And then number three, use the one-tailed test from number one, set alpha to 0.08, explain what this means in the conclusion. Okay, so they're setting alpha equal to 0.08. So... Let's see. So we could say something like So so if we if we happen to find if we found if we found strong evidence that sleep is associated with depression associated with higher level depression we would have a 8% chance we are wrong okay so, I don't know seems like a pretty simple concept as long as you keep the null alternative all those fun things and then you what? So wait, on the note it says if we select an out value of 0.05, we are associating that with being 95% confident. Uh -huh. So wouldn't it be like wouldn't it used to be a 92% confident? Yeah. That's... So what if I? Oh, okay. 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 So e either way. No, so so yes, we could we could say 92% confident. Confident. So I think both ways is a. Okay easy way to deal with it and then let's see we couldn't do number five because I was dealing with up above and then number seven says we set alpha set to 0.08 they like this 0.08 for some reason what would be the advantage of setting the alpha higher to a higher value so if if alpha is greater than easier to reject the null. Okay. So, so the 0.08 again, 8% that you're wrong, 92% you're right. If you set it higher, then it keeps going. Hey. Then, wait a minute. Yeah. What? We skip five. five. Yep. Problem number nine says a soda drink company is changing the taste of its products and wants to conduct taste tests to see which tastes better to their customers, the old flavor or the new. Oh my gosh, this brings back so many memories. In the late 70s early 80s they had something called the pepsi challenge and how the pepsi challenge worked was you would go to a grocery store and there would be a guy out front and he would have 
product A, product B. We'd have a big blue billboard full. And one of them was Pepsi and one of them was Coca-Cola. And so you try each and like what do you prefer? And we were just going to see, you know, act like we were, you know, really being part of this test, but we just wanted free soda. <laughs> so and they would film all these commercials where people were choosing Pepsi at these grocery stores. And they actually found out that during the taste test, they were um, allowing the Coca-Cola to become flat, so sit out for longer in the open air, so it would lose the carbon the carbon dioxide in it, the CO2 bubbles. So that changes the taste of it, because flat soda doesn't taste as good. But I don't know, we got free soda out of it. But I remember there was commercials all over the place. Hey, it's a Pepsi challenge. Oh, this is great. Go get free soda. All right, so number nine. So a soda company wants to change the taste of one of its products and wants to conduct taste tests to see which tastes better to their customers, the old flavor or the new. Okay, state the alternative or state the null. So there's no difference in flavor. And the alternative, there is difference. So pretty simple. Uh, let's see, assume number 11 says, assume the study is considered statistically significant at 0.10. Okay, so explain what this means in the context of the question. So we reject the null when alpha equals 0.10. And then that was letter A, letter B. What are plausible values of P? Uh, you would want P to be between 0 and 0 0.10. And then letter C. Come on down. Letter C. What is the probability we made a type 1 error? There is a 10% chance. What is probability that we made a type 2 error? And that would be a 0% chance. All right, so type 1, type 2, let's just verify why those would take place. I want to go back to the type 1, type 2 errors. Okay, remember. Failed to reject type 1, type 2. So a type 1 error, when we reject the null hypothesis, that is really true. So we have type 1 error, 10% chance that there, we are we reject the null. So the null could be true in this case. Type 2 is when we fail to reject the null hypothesis that is really false. So type 1, type 2. I lost my page. And then let's see. Almost done. I think there's one more question. Is there not? All right. Hmm. Assume that the researchers decide that a type 2 error is worse and should be avoided. What alpha? Should alpha be set higher or lower? Explain briefly. Um, the higher alpha. Um, will lower the type 1 error, which would in turn not point to a type 2. Something like that. That's what I got. That's it. So this week, I don't have any quizzes. And I know y'all woke up this morning going, dude, we better have a quiz in statistics. <laughs> Sorry. I know. I apologize. I, I know. <laughs> well, team, team building with those of you who make it, and then those of you who don't make it going, wait a minute. They got to take it together. Well, 
you're here, maybe you'd get that same opportunity. So, all right. So what I'd like for us to complete, um, I would like us to make sure page 103 and 104 is all done. So evens, odds, and number five. Oh, what am I well, squint. Try and figure it out. Sorry. That's all I got for you. You have the rest of the period to work on that. Ask me if you. Yeah. Or it's.